All right, you ready for this? It's just beautiful. Before we get into the video, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video, Nerd or Die. Being a designer, I really do appreciate what Nerd or Die do. In fact, a lot of their early designs were some of the things that kickstarted my designing career when it came to figuring out what I wanted to do for my own stream, including packs like Focus, which is a minimally designed stream package from Nerd or Die. It features a simple and clean look with almost endless customization. The overlay pack has seven different color options, and the widgets and alerts include custom fields that let you change the colors, language, animation directions, and much more. So if you guys want to head over to nerdordie.com, there is a link to the package in the description down below. And don't forget, you can save 10% off if you use the code alpha at checkout. Look, Emon, or Pokemon as the world calls you, uh, you're a staple streamer in the community. We all know that. And if you are watching this video, then just be sure that this isn't a uh, an insult at your content. It's just... We saw a creative opportunity here. Since I've been on this channel, we've done a lot of fun redesigns from Ninja's Overlay, and including the ones you guys have sent over to me. And you guys know how this works. When I do a big streamer redesign, I don't go looking for bad streams. I just look for ones that have room for creativity. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's be objective here. Pokimane knows what a selling point is, and it's her. She's cute. That's okay. She's a decent gamer. There we go! Going down in favor of easy clap. And she spends most of her time talking with her viewers, spending quality time with thousands of people who probably think she's unattainable. Whereas Pokimane is more, she's the perfect human being in every way possible kind of deal. In other words, people don't come to her stream for her overlays, they come for her. And it's obvious she's still using the base OBS font for her donation ticker tape that she has to show off her recent donations. Any redesigns are going to be done with the purpose of polishing and fixing what's already there as well as making a manageable package that makes sense for her stream. But we're going to get real creative and see if we can better utilize the minimal space to give her stream the more professional look it deserves. I mean, look at these panels. They don't even fit properly. All right, let's begin. And before we do jump into anything, I just want to quickly remind everybody that I do stream on Twitch. I'm live every Monday, Wednesday, Friday evening. The link to my channel is in the description down below. If you guys want to come by, drop me a follow, ask any questions about video editing, motion graphics design, or design in general, or anything I've done in this video, you guys have questions about them, feel free to ask me over there when I am live. Also, don't forget, if you find the video helpful, entertaining, informative, or engaging in any way, then be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks. Let's take a look at her starting point. There are a couple of branding elements that I really wanted to keep. Most notably was the gradient from her panels, which is a nice pink and blue and peachy kind of color, as well as her alerts, which are quite frankly fantastic compared to the rest of her overlay. Look, Iman, if you're watching this, sorry, not sorry. Uh, we're gonna be laying into you a little bit during this video, but it's not completely undeserved. Just keep in mind, if you do want any of the assets we have made, then be sure to hit me up on Twitter. The link to that is in the description down below. You are more than welcome to use them. So with that said, let's jump in and show you guys what I did for redesigning Pokemon's overlays. So I started off wanting to optimize and simplify Pokemon's game and just chatting screens. A lot of her stats were very basic, uh, either just a rotating ticker uh, along the top of her screen which showed her latest donation, along with a sub count at the bottom of her just chatting screen. I wanted to unify these and present them in a really clean way, as well as bring some kind of functionality to the design so it just wasn't something that just sat there but it had another use, another purpose, similar to the webcam design I did for Ninja where the line underneath his webcam served a double purpose and it was a sub train animation and it provided more context to its placement and to its functionality on stream. I went back and forth a lot on the initial concepts and I decided I wanted to keep things simple and in line with her current alerts which seemed really professionally made compared with the rest of her overlay. I had inspiration from streamers like Courage JD where all of his metrics are isolated and presented in a really clean and minimal way as little squares or rectangles at the bottom of his stream and I wanted to incorporate some similar to Pokemon's design but also keeping with the alert theme and scheme that is present across all of her scenes and her brand. I remade the Pokemon logo from scratch to use within the design and incorporated the shield element she uses on her game screen into the design and use it as the centerpiece, almost like a shield on a crest to make it the center focus of the element to give it some anchor and some weight. From there, it was pretty much simply adding the metrics for the two things she primarily uses, which is her latest sub name, her 
top donator name. And then I want to do something really fun and really cool and incorporate her sub count for her stream inside the metrics somehow. I had the idea of making the P instead of the Pokemon shield animate to reveal the sub count for the day inside of the shield. This could be easily done through some clever coding using JavaScript and CSS to make a mask around the number and the logo and have the logo animate up and reveal the number for the subs for the day. I envisioned it to be on a rotating basis so every 15 to 20 seconds the P would animate up and reveal the total subs for the day and when she received a new sub it would trigger the same animation and then increment by how many total subs she just received. I really wanted this to be a modular design so that Emon could move around her screen depending on what particular scene she wants to use and depending on if she wants to change her mind down the line. It gives her the flexibility of not having to worry about the placement of her webcam. She can move that freely along with this floating window that presents all of her metrics in one single unified area and it looks more clean, more minimal and it presents a better representation for her brand along with her alerts and it just cleans things up in a really nice way. Now let's move on to the next thing that I designed and that was updating her panels and giving them a fresh new look. Looking at her current panels I really want to keep some aspect of them and I really liked the gradient colours that she used for her panels so I wanted to keep them and I actually used them inside of the floating metric window I designed for her just chatting and her gameplay scenes. I also wanted to bring over the arrowhead rectangle shape I designed for the floating metric window from her gameplay and chatting scenes over to her panels to create a more consistent and cohesive panel design that matches her on-stream brand. Updated the iconography and made sure that all of the panels were the same width and height so therefore when she adds them to her Twitch page she isn't going to worry about the sizing and cropping things off in any particular way shape or form. All right it's time for the transition and this one is a bit of a doozy and we did something that I've actually never seen anyone else do on Twitch so uh, buckle up and get ready to take some notes. What I really wanted to accomplish here was something that was really advanced and beautiful but packaged in a way that looked really simple. Essentially it's a combination of a swipe transition and a stinger transition but what makes it so smooth is that the swipe is actually happening underneath the stinger which is showing both scenes at the same time which is something you normally can't do with a stinger transition. Also there's a simple parallax at play here which adds some depth to the effect and uh, you know, it just looks really cool. So the first step is actually creating the element that swipes across the screen. When designing Pokemon's transition, I really wanted something that was really simple and really elegant, but also very advanced and taking some of the techniques we've demonstrated in the advanced OBS transitions video and introducing them into this transition. It's a very basic and simple transition where there's an angled rectangle moving across from right to left of the screen, but I introduced an extra level of detail by adding her banner art that she uses for a Twitch and a YouTube channel inside of the rectangle and gave that some life by making it so their character blinks, giving it some personality and extra layer of detail to the overall transition. From there, it's a simple case of animating it from right to left on screen. As you can see, there's a little bit of parallaxing going on with the transition to give it an extra level of detail and extra level of depth. And lastly, make sure the last half of the transition is completely filled with a green solid and I'll explain why that's going to be useful in just a bit. Now, the real match behind this is that none of this is actually happening during a transition at all. It actually happens in its own scene entirely. Let me show you how. You can see inside of OBS, I have three scenes. I have a just chatting scene, a gameplay scene, as well as a transition scene, which includes both the just chatting scene and the gameplay scene as sources. Inside of our just chatting scene, I'm going to add the transition we made earlier with the green screen element and add it to the very top of the layer stack. Just keep a note here, our transition should be set to a pretty fast crossfade so that uh, none of the real transitions are actually noticeable. You can see the center of the shape going across and finishing on the other side of the screen and it fills the whole canvas with green. If we were to chroma key this layer it wouldn't be very helpful for us because it's just going to reveal the same scene underneath it. Here's the magic trick. If I were to add the chroma key effect to the just chatting scene source inside of the transition scene something really cool happens. The chroma key is now wiping away parts of the chatting scene to reveal the gameplay scene underneath it to make it look like a really effective and really cool swiping transition. All that's really left to do now is take your macro device of choice, whether it's touch portal on your phone or indeed a stream deck like I'm using and put a couple of actions into one single button. Start with switching scenes to the transition scene. Then we'll activate the animation source, bringing our swipe across the screen. The moment this is done, you add a delay for the amount of milliseconds that you need. Mine ended up being 4,500 milliseconds. Switch to the destination source of your transition and you're pretty much set. Important note, if you haven't realized it yet, you'll have to make different scene sets for both directions 
directions of this transition. Both going from gameplay to chatting and then from chatting to gameplay. So it can take a little bit longer to set up, but uh, once you have everything there, you just set up the whole macro to a scene button and uh, you are set. And that is pretty much everything guys. I hope you found this video insightful. If you have any questions about the things I mentioned in this video, then don't forget to do stream on Twitch. I'm live every Monday, Wednesday, Friday evening. The link to my channel is in the description down below. If you guys have any questions, any feedback or any ideas you want to share with me, that is the best place to do that. Also, if you guys have any questions or any ideas you want to share with the community and start talking to the like-minded individuals and content creators, and don't forget we have a Discord. The link to that is in the description down below. A whole bunch of you guys talk and chat in there every single day. So uh, go over there, find some friends and uh, make some awesome content together. So guys, thank you so much for watching. And once again, take it easy and uh, happy streaming. I'm, sh I'm shroud, guys. I'm shroud. It's just having a bust in here. I'm shroud.